So last time we met, we were discussing uh, CMOS inverters, which is basically a common source amplifier with an active load. That's how we started off, but we then decided to apply signal to both NMOS and PMOS transistors. That uh, adds up the gain of the NMOS and PMOS parts and can be beneficial in some cases. Okay. So the way we started off with was by taking a PMOS common source amplifier. and using an NMOS common source load ok. So, this is the input in this case and this is the output ok. Now, the motivation for using active load must be very clear. It is just that it gives you a very high small signal resistance, but without a proportionately large voltage drop ok. If you could make an ideal current source, you would actually use it there because that gives you an infinitely large uh, incremental resistance with any voltage, uh, any voltage can be across the current source, ok. And we also have the NMOS common source amplifier where it is exactly the same circuit, but the input is applied here and VGP is fixed, ok. And finally, we have the inverter where we feed inputs to both. Now, it is possible to bias each of these gates separately and AC couple the inputs, but the one an easy option is to connect them together. Okay, and call that the input. Sir, yeah. Yeah. First of all, we have not actually biased it correctly yet. Okay, we want to bias it in the high gain region, which is what we are going to see. No, no, that's correct. But as an amplifier, if you want to use it as an amplifier. You want to bias it where the slope is highest, V naught versus V i. So, how do you ensure that? No, a what? So, we do use it to make not gates, but that is not our current interest, ok. So, we use it quite a lot for digital circuits. <laughs> so, like I said, so the question is how do we actually do that so that it is biased in that region, ok. We already evaluated the characteristics. For uh, some set of voltages near 0, where the NMOS transistor is off, the output will be exactly equal to VDD. For a set of voltages near uh, the supply voltage, where the PMOS transistor is off, the output will be exactly 0. And if you go a little beyond that, what happens is one of the transistors is in triode region. The output will fall, it will respond to the input, but the gain, the small signal gain here is very small. Okay. So, in this region, the PMOS is in triode and NMOS is in saturation, ok, because you see that uh, the output is very large. So, you have a large voltage across the NMOS and a small voltage across the PMOS transistor, ok. And similarly, here there is a region where the voltage across the NMOS is small. So, it is in triode and PMOS is in saturation. I mean technically this is also an amplifier. The output is decreasing with increasing input. Okay. It has a negative gain and the formula is still the same GM, uh, GMN plus GMP by GDSN plus GDSP. It is just that GDSN and GDSP are very large okay. or one of them is very large. Now, the interesting part is in the middle where this is nearly vertical. If you assume that lambda n and lambda p are 0, it will be exactly vertical that is and what value will that be? 
So, you imagine calculating the saturation current of this and this separately. Okay. So, as you change the value of V i, this will have some current if it was in saturation region. Okay. Similarly, NMOS will have some current if it was in saturation region. These two will be equal at some for some value of V i. Okay. That is the value of V i for which you will have this vertical drop. Now, with lambda n and lambda p not being 0, uh, this is not exactly vertical, but it will have a high slope where both are in uh, a saturation region. So, they will have substantial gm and their GDSs are very small. That is why the incremental gain gmn by gmn, gmn plus gmp by gdsn plus gdsp that will be a large number. Okay. So, and you can also uh, uh, you can also evaluate this by uh, trying to analyze it graphically. If the slope is exactly 0 in the saturation region, there will be only one particular value of V i for which there is any point of intersection at all right? in that flat region. But if the slope is somewhat like this, then there are a few points that you can make out. Okay? Now, this uh, value though, the value of V i for which, I mean let us for a moment imagine that lambda n and lambda p are 0. So, this will drop vertically. The value of V i for which that happens, for which uh, both transistors are in saturation region, it is very sensitive to the parameters of the transistor. Okay. Yeah. What is inconsistent? Oh. No, no, that is correct. So, what it means is that that is not inconsistent. Okay. What does it mean? So, let us say this characteristic was exactly vertical, right. Uh, what is the inconsistency here? Why? No, I mean if V i is exactly equal to this. So, what it means is that for a given for this particular value of V i, V out can be anywhere between this. Okay, That is the meaning of infinite gain, right? that is the large signal interpretation of infinite gain. What is the meaning of infinite gain? You can have a finite output voltage when the input is 0. Okay. Now, gain always refers to incremental gain. Okay. So, we have infinitely large incremental gain. So, what it means is that if you think of this as the operating point for 0 change from this the output can actually change. Okay. So, that is the in fact that is an ideal case. right? So, you have infinite incremental gain. So, if you do use this in a negative feedback you have a very good negative feedback circuit. It is not there is no inconsistency here. Right? All it is saying is that for the same value of V i the output can have some any value. You cannot determine that by specifying the value of V i. Okay. Right? So, any of them I mean if you have, do have a vertical characteristic after all if you apply the input you cannot tell whether it is here or there or there. You for sure know that it is not going to be there or there that is all. Okay. So, what exact value so that is why this circuit by itself is also useless. Okay. That is you cannot hope to ever apply some uh, input voltage and expect that it will be in that region. You have to ensure using negative feedback that it will be in that region. When you do that the negative feedback part will determine what the output voltage is. This is exactly like an uh, op amp right. What is the output voltage of, of, a, of an op amp which is not in negative feedback you cannot tell. Okay. So, it is exactly the same thing right. So, when you have infinite incremental gain in fact, in general even a large gain you cannot bias it or you cannot do anything with it by setting the input and you cannot operate it in open loop. That is you cannot set the input and expect that the output will be some value because the characteristic is so steep, so sensitive that small changes in the input or maybe small changes in the parameters of the circuit will go make the output go haywire. The only way to uh, use such circuits properly, circuits which have very high sensitivity is to actually look at the output, compare it with something and use feedback around the circuit. Okay. So, this is the reason why you want to start using an op amp you have to have negative feedback around it. Okay. So, that was uh, going to be my question. So, now if you change the parameters of the MOS transistors let us say uh, the current factors or the threshold voltages change 
uh, the characteristic could be that way or maybe something like that ok. So, if you try to fix the value of V i even if this slope is finite, but it will be very large. If you try to fix the value of V i if the characteristic magically happens to be the middle one it will be in this region, but if it is this it will be here where the incremental gain is very small and if it is that it will be there where the incremental gain again is very small. So, how do you guarantee that it will get biased in this region ok. So, that was the question I was asking at the end of the previous class. We have a CMOS inverter this principle by the way applies to any circuit with a high gain and we have already used it with op amps ok. So, I have V i and V o and we also know V naught versus V i and I already told you that this expect I mean applying some V i and expecting V naught to be some nice value within this high slope region that is not possible ok. So, the only way that this will work is somehow we have to sense V naught may be compared to something and then apply feedback to V i and the feedback should be I mean the sense of feedback should be negative. So, that if V naught diverges from the desired point it will bring it back ok. So, tell me what can I use? short ok. So, the other day we were uh, discussing the uh, range of outputs for which both transistors will be in saturation. What was the conclusion? What was the upper limit for V i? Uh, upper limit for V naught ok. So, this is what we saw. I mean if uh, the input voltage is something and the output voltage is one threshold voltage below that then the NMOS transistor will go into triode region. If it is one PMOS threshold above the input then the PMOS transistor will go into triode region. So, somewhere between these it will work right. Now, we also know that V T n and V T p are positive. So, clearly if we set V naught equals V i or V i equals V naught that will for sure uh, ensure that the transistors are in saturation region. Is this ok? That is one possibility you could have something else also. I mean you could have V naught slightly different from the input, but still have it in have both in saturation region, but this is a convenient value. So, if you have V naught equals V i how do you graphically depict that it will be a 45 degree line here ok. So, instead of uh, trying to apply a given value of V i you make sure that the uh, the input voltage is exactly same as the output voltage. In that case, if the inverter characteristic happens to be the middle one, it will be there and if the inverter characteristic shifts because of uh, changing transistor parameters, it may not be the optimum, but it will still be where the slope is very high and so same is true for the other characteristic ok. This is clear. So, one possibility of biasing a CMOS inverter which has a very high gain is to make sure that the operating point at the operating point input voltage is same as the output voltage ok. Any questions about this? And how do I do this? How do I set the input to be the same as the output? What should I do? Yeah, I could just uh, short it together, ok, just for the sake of biasing. Right. So, it will get biased at some value. Now, let us assume that the current factor here is kp that is kp is mu p c ox and the current factor here is kn which is mu n c ox and the threshold voltage here is v t p the threshold voltage here is v t n ok. Please find the voltage at this point ok you know v d d you know kp and v t p kn and v t n ok. So, please find this voltage this the inverter output is connected to the input 
and essentially this uh, structure it is called self biased. So, this is known as the self bias voltage and typically referred to as V m does not matter what you call it, but please find that voltage and also find the current flowing in the MOS transistor. Once you find one the other one is quite easy ok. Please do this like very simple nonlinear circuit analysis. Here I am talking about the lab signal stuff right we are not talking about any incremental thing I just want to find the operating point using nonlinear analysis that is all. Basically all you have to do is to equate the P MOS current to N MOS current and when it is self biased the P MOS current will be K P by 2 times the source gate voltage which is V D D minus V M minus the P MOS threshold. This is the P MOS current and this will be equal to N MOS current which is the self biased voltage minus V T N squared ok and from this you will directly get uh, V M. What is the expression you get? I just told you all this <laughs> we found this circuit the whole point of connecting the input and output was to make sure that they are in saturation right is not it. For this you look at this inequality if uh, output is between V i plus V T p or V i minus V T n where V T p and V T n are both positive numbers it uh, both the transistors will be in saturation. So, clearly V i equals V naught it will be in saturation ok. So, this plus you get something what do you get? Yeah, so there are many ways to write it and I think I will write it in we will get some square root k p times square root k p times v t p divided by ok. I have many ways to write the same thing. What I wanted to just show you was this part of the expression. If you had a resistive divider between V D D and ground and this was conductance G P and this was conductance G N, what would be the voltage here? Yeah, it is G P by G P plus G N in terms of conductances ok. You are probably more familiar with the expression with resistances, but this is the expression with conductances. Now, because MOS transistor is a nonlinear device, you will get square roots, square root KP by square root KP plus square root KN. If it was linear, you would have got KP by KP plus KN, and you also get some shift because of the threshold voltage. If uh, NMOS and PMOS, if the uh, if there was symmetry, that is, the NMOS and PMOS had the same threshold and the same current factors, obviously this would go away, and you would get only VDD by two. Okay. Now you can also see if uh, once the threshold voltages are equal you have to make the current factors equal to get V D D by 2. So, I already mentioned that the mobility of P MOS is smaller than mobility of N MOS. To make the current factors equal you have to make W by L of P MOS bigger than W by L of N MOS ok. So, in many cases inverters are designed with P MOS which are bigger than N MOS ok. And you can plug this into the current expression. What is the expression for the current that is flowing through the devices half of K P K N ok V T N square ok. So, this I mean roughly it looks like the expression for a single MOS transistor right it is some square law expression that is actually the disadvantage of this circuit ok. In fact, earlier we said that we want uh, the current in a MOS transistor to be fixed. So, that the sensitivity is small now this circuit is very simple we can just tie both the I mean tie the two gates together. The problem is the current flowing through this is really goes up as the square of V D D ok. So, V D D changes by a little bit the current changes by a substantial amount. 
So that is the disadvantage of this. If you expect a scenario where the voltage is changing quite a bit, you do not want to use this. You have to have some other way of regulating the current. There are circuits like that. We use it because it is very simple and also uh, I said no digital in this class, but uh, we do have CMOS inverters which are very convenient to use because there are 6 of them on a single chip. Okay, You may have used these in uh, uh, digital circuits classes. Now, there are many kinds of logical inverters, but there are chips which have just the CMOS inverter in them and because there are 6 of them essentially you have 6 amplifiers to play with in a single package. So, we will be using them quite extensively in the next semester's lab because uh, we can make many interesting analog circuits using amplifiers. Only thing is you have to bias them like this. Okay. So, what I told you just now about biasing a CMOS inverter in the high slope region, it will be region, it will be very useful in the next semester's lab. Okay. So, we will make uh, some circuits including filters and feedback amplifiers with them. Uh, you can also try to use independent transistors, but then the breadboard will be so messy that the chances of getting it to work is very small, whereas this in a single small package you will have 6 inverters and you can do lots of interesting stuff with them. Okay. So, please remember all this stuff about inverters. They are not the most popular way when you are designing an IC, this may not be the most popular way to do it, although people do use CMOS inverters for various reasons even in analog circuits, but uh, yeah, uh, for us it is particularly useful. Any questions about any of these things so far? So, what we did was I mean we first had the common source amplifier with a resistive load that gives limited gain. Then uh, we found better ways of biasing the transistor at constant current that gives better sensitivity. Then we found that yeah we also will need various types of control sources. So, those things we synthesize using negative feedback that is for a single transistor. We also on the way saw that uh, the op amp is a very useful uh, element in negative feedback to implement negative feedback circuits. Okay. Uh, it gives us a lot of freedom. It has 2 inputs and it gives you the virtual short between 2 inputs and so on. So, everything else that we did, we have some bias which may be convenient or sometimes not so convenient and incrementally it works as we desired. That is, uh, it will be some type of control source or something of the sort. But the amount of loop gain that you can have using just a single transistor is quite limited. Okay. For instance, we always got expressions of the type GMR by GMR plus 1 and the GMR product is probably 10 or 20 or something, Okay, whereas we may want it in the thousands. So, that that number that ratio loop gain by loop gain plus 1 is very very close to 1. Okay, I think by now you are uh, far enough ahead in control systems to know that this is the holy grail. right? You have to have very large loop gain and we also saw in uh, terms of control sources how to stabilize the system when we do have very large loop gains okay, when we use multiple stages. So, what is kind of left is just to make the op amp by itself a nice op amp which has uh, 2 inputs I mean just the triangle that we draw with 2 inputs which do not draw any current and which can provide a very high gain. So, we have all the equipment to do that. We have now active loads also yeah that is the last thing that we discussed so that you can get as much gain as possible from a single stage. Okay, So, that is the role of the active load. So, now we have to put all these things together to make the op amp. So, any questions on anything that we discussed recently, the uh, active load and so on. And we also have the freedom of using either type of transistor NMOS or PMOS. So, for every NMOS circuit, for every circuit there will be the opposite counterpart, right. So, where every NMOS is changed to PMOS and every PMOS is changed to NMOS. Okay. Any questions on anything? Active load stuff. Uh, no, once we have once we have the gates tied together like this right and the supply voltage here, the V G S of this transistor is V D D minus V S G of that transistor or sum of V G S and V S D equals V D D. So, then it will be very sensitive to V D D. Okay. To bias it better, what could possibly be done is uh, one example is let us say we have a current mirror to bias it. If the PMOS transistor is in saturation, I naught will be flowing there. Okay. And similarly, for the NMOS part, we can have a current mirror. If this is in saturation, I naught will be flowing there. And 
this still needs feedback because we can't guarantee that i not here and i not there are exactly the same so one side will need some feedback okay and you could apply some input voltage like that okay so actually you can't do it like this because there is no guarantee that this will be i not and that will also be exactly i not okay so what you have to do is you have to bias one side with i not okay and the other side you use drain feedback or something else okay so this will make sure that this will be biased at a given current i not but both will be in saturation depending on the output voltage okay so this circuit i mean this is not complicated at all basically this is what we have done long back this circuit we have made okay all i did was i implemented this using a pmos current source i also applied i can also apply signal to this side okay so it gives me i mean this also behaves like a common source amplifier now so i have both nmos and pmos common source amplifiers okay it's a good thing you reminded me because uh, the we know now how to bias the cmos inverter if you want to apply a signal to this what should we do to bias it we have to connect the output to input now of course biasing it is not enough in that high slope region i want to use the gain so that means that i have to be able to apply an incremental vi to the gates of the transistor so what should i do what is that connect it through a capacitor okay is this enough what will be v not now equal to vi so what should we do we have to it's only for dc that we have to make this voltage equal to that voltage that can be arranged using a large inductor or a large resistor okay now this becomes exactly similar to the drain feedback common source amplifier we had made common source amplifier using drain feedback the only difference now is that we have summed up the outputs of nmos common source amplifier and pmos common source amplifier otherwise it's exactly the same all the expressions will be the same as well okay i think the assignment the latest assignment does have some uh, problems of this type so you can work them out and see okay any questions so now so let's say i do this what will be this voltage it will be the self bias voltage vm right this will also be the self bias voltage vm now i connect the input through a capacitor c1 what will be the voltage at the gate vm plus yeah so there will be an increment vi okay because c1 is very large it's where the input is directly connected there what will be the output minus gain okay so you will have huh? yeah that's right yeah i mean this is with rg going to infinity you have to actually figure out how much rg must be but this we have done a couple of times i mean in drain feedback we have done this so you know what it must be i think it's gm times rds times something and so on so okay and you can also couple this to a load by the way then you will get plus gl also okay yeah this is how we will uh, use it as an amplifier in the lab okay any questions on the concept of the active load basically a resistive load the problem is if you want a very high resistance it will also there will be some operating point current flowing through it and that will cause a large dc voltage okay so you will be forced to use very large dc supply voltages if you use stick to resistive loads or you have to confine yourself to small gains which is how they are used in practice if you want to use small gains resistors are a good option but if you want very large gains uh, they are not okay so you have to use some non linear element where the dc drop and the incremental resistance have really no relationship with each other okay a current source is one of them it can have any voltage across it but it will have infinite incremental resistance now we can't make a 
pure current source, we have to use a MOS transistor as a current source. There, the voltage is not completely unrestricted, okay. You have to still maintain the transistor in saturation region, but that voltage is not related to the incremental resistance of the current source, okay. This is fine. And we also briefly discussed how to make a better current source. What was that? If we wanted to make a current source with a higher output resistance, what do we need to do? What do we do? I mean, if you want to take a current source and make it better, what other circuit can we throw on top of it? What can we do? Yeah, exactly. So, I thought I had it somewhere. Ah, yeah, exactly. So, now this by itself is a current source, but its output resistance is RDS. You use a current control current source on top of it, you can have even higher stuff, okay. So, this also can be used as an active load. So, now it has an even higher output resistance, but it needs some voltage across this and some voltage across that, okay. So, there is always some trade off, but it is much better than using just a resistor, okay. So, the concept of active load is simply a current source, right, but the real implementation of a current source using MOS transistors and it can be PMOS or NMOS or anything. So, if there are, yes. No, that is because you get a much higher output, much higher resistance, right. So, you will uh, looking into a single transistor, the resistance is RDS. If you look here, the resistance is much higher. It is like having a much higher output, much higher load resistance for an amplifier. Huh? Yeah, that is right. So, what we want to make is let us imagine a PMOS common source amplifier and for simplicity, I will assume that the GDS of this is 0, okay. The uh, load here is, I am mean, sorry, the gain here is GM RL. The larger you make RL, the larger the gain you have. So, it is a, I mean of course, now you could get limited by the PMOS side and then you have to do something else on that side. Also. So, if there are no other questions, we can uh, try to make an op amp and what is an op amp? It is, the main thing is that it has two inputs. There is some ground here. So, if I call this V1 and V2, okay the op amp responds to V 1 minus V 2. The output should be some large number times V 1 minus V 2, okay. So, this is basically what we want to get and we try to, we have some sort of model using control sources where we first get, sorry, this is V d. We have some G m times V 1 minus V 2 and then we had like a two stage structure where we had this capacitor and all that stuff, okay. So, but at the heart of the op amp, we have this essentially a control source which responds to the difference between two voltages with respect to ground. Is this clear? So, a MOS transistor is also a control source, but the common source amplifier we have now, if I have V1 here, it will be G m times V1, okay. So, but I want G m times V 1 minus V 2, okay. So, how should I try to implement this? Now, a MOS transistor does respond to, I mean a voltage is always a difference between, uh, I mean difference of potentials between two terminals. A MOS transistor does respond to what? The voltage difference between gate and source, okay. So, if I want G m times V 1 minus V 2, what should I do? I mean forget biasing for now, right. Everything I talk about will be incremental stuff. Later we will figure out how to bias these things. What should I do now to get G m times V 1 minus V 2? What is that? If uh, the incremental voltage here is V 1 and incremental voltage there is V 2, the current here will be G m times V 1 minus V 2, okay. So, it appears to be very simple.
this is correct this will work i mean let me just connect the train to some ground small signal ground again i am only talking about the incremental picture here assume that the transistor is biased in saturation somehow we have a number of techniques to do that okay so let's uh, assume that now this appears okay there are a couple of uh, problems though the main thing is first of all what is the input resistance of uh, the resistance seen by v1 infinity okay yeah the gate no current infinity what is the resistance seen by v2 1 by 1 by gm right if you look into the so if you set v1 equal to 0 the gate is grounded and looking into the source of the transistor you will have 1 by gm okay so this is a problem by itself right what we wanted was an op amp with high impedance into both terminals basically no current should go into either of them okay so this looks okay it gives us the difference but the problem is the two inputs are asymmetrical okay so one has a very high input resistance which is desirable but the other one has a very small input resistance which is definitely not desirable okay clearly now you see that even if i have identical resistances here it will not be v1 gm times v1 minus v2 it will be something times v1 plus something else times v2 okay so it doesn't work this is okay first of all hope it's clear that this circuit gives you gm times v1 minus v2 if it is driven like this but the problem is the impedance looking into the gate and the source are different so if the so input voltage sources are non ideal which they will be they have some internal resistances we will not be getting the difference between the two voltages in the output we will get some number times v1 plus some other unrelated number times v2 okay some linear combination that's not what we want so how do we fix the situation two mosfets yeah we'll see that has some other problems but uh, i mean we will say that okay we have kind of half solved the problem right this gives us the difference and as far as one uh, one of the inputs is concerned it is all right it has infinite input resistance it's only v2 that is unsatisfied so how do we fix the situation so when you have you are uh, you have a very uh, so as far as v2 is concerned its load has a very small resistance okay so when you have very small resistance as a load and you have to drive it from some v2 which may have a very high input resistance what do you have to do what could you do when you have a heavy load and you want to drive it with a source that is not able to drive that heavy load what can you what do you have to do what is the block that you can use what's that voltage control voltage source you have to use a voltage buffer right so the whole point of the buffer is that if you have a heavy load if you connect the load directly to the source there will be so much attenuation that you hardly get any signal across the load so that is the situation for that's the situation for which the buffer is made right you use a buffer in between so that the load is isolated from the source okay is this clear the motivation so v2 now it is driving the source of the transistor and the source of the transistor presents an input resist presents a resistance of 1 by gm okay so if this v2 is non ideal that is if there is some resistance in series with it the actual voltage that appears at the source terminal will be very small okay so we have to use a buffer for v2 so that no current is drawn from v2 either okay now no current is drawn from v1 we want v2 to be treated equally well okay this is what we have to do now regardless of the internal resistances of these sources we'll have v1 here v2 there and that current will be gm times v1 minus v2 okay of course the point is now i can't be drawing triangles like this we have to put down the transistor level circuit so what is the circuit i can use there source follower that's the voltage buffer that we know okay i will show the internal resistances also v1 
this goes to the gate i will call this m1 okay now what i want is this picture i will draw it separately just so that there is no confusion when i turn the transistors around it has some internal resistance and i have a voltage buffer okay and if i have to draw it with transistors this is the voltage buffer right it's a source follower is this correct source follower is my voltage buffer and gives a gain of nearly 1 and uh, it has a very high input resistance and a small output resistance so i will use a source uh, this is now not being used yet so i'll just turn this circuit around facing the other way okay so from our viewpoint this is the amplifier and this is the buffer right so what we wanted was to apply v1 to the gate of m1 and v2 to the source of m1 now if you apply directly to the source we said okay v2 will be attenuated heavily so we pass v2 through a buffer m2 and apply it to the source of m1 this is okay i mean this is how we synthesize circuits i mean many other ideas like using two transistors those are also fine you can try out and see what happens okay so this is one possibility now we have to use our analysis machinery to see what exactly this does right because we know that the source follower buffer is not ideal and all that stuff okay so please evaluate the current here okay i mean this is really this represents the incremental circuit okay assume that this transistor has a certain gm1 and assume that there is no gds that's the simplest case and assume that this transistor has some gm2 okay just to be general and find out what this current is we figure out whether it really behaves the way we want it or not okay what did we want what did we want we want that current to be some number times i1 minus sorry v1 minus v2 okay it should amplify only the difference that's actually very important right it should sense only the difference it shouldn't if you throw v1 and v2 into any linear circuit you will get alpha times v1 plus beta times v2 where alpha and beta are arbitrary we want beta to be exactly minus alpha okay we want it to that's what is meant by the circuit responding to only the difference v1 minus v2 so please find this current id i mean maybe id1 and also this current id2 in this case small signal everything is small signal because i have not even shown how to bias it yet okay simply assume that uh this transistor has uh, some gm1 and zero gds that implies saturation region similarly this transistor has some gm2 and zero gds okay please do that and find the currents what do you get you get uh, something times v1 minus v2 you do right so it's actually a useful circuit only thing is i mean that proportionality constant is not gm1 okay but that's okay we stumbled across a very useful circuit now i could have put down this circuit and asked you to analyze but there it's always good to have some motivation to why circuits are the way they are okay so you can always think of this as a common source amplifier m1 to which or a transistor m1 and you apply an input to the gate and you apply a buffered input to the source okay so we will continue from here tomorrow and then build this up gradually towards the complete op amp